audiences have debated for decades over the ultimate question about Blade Runner. Is Rick Deckard a replicant? When we first meet Harrison Ford's Deckard, the bounty hunter or Blade Runner at the center of Ridley Scott's 1982 film, he's tasked with killing android slaves called replicants. I need the old Blade Runner. I need your magic. Deckard is reluctant, but he mostly completes his assignment, though not before falling in love with a beautiful replicant called Rachel. Rachel is so human-like that it takes an unusually high number of questions on Deckard's test to discern her android nature. It took more than a hundred for Rachel, didn't it? She doesn't know. And significantly, she asks him... You know that void comp test of yours? Did you ever take that test yourself? Deckard doesn't respond, but the answer to this question has significant implications for our understanding of Deckard as a character and for the film's overall message. Blade Runner 2049 may add more to the picture, but we can find some pretty clear evidence to support an answer to this question. The subtext of Blade Runner is, is that we're not really sure what Deckard is. I mean, there's evidence that he may well be a replicant himself. He's just a much older model. And then the most recent model is Rachel. So the question that is asked that's at the heart of Blade Runner is what is it that defines humanity? And one of the things that is obviously defining humanity is mortality. Because the replicants have returned to Earth simply to ask their creator to give them a longer lifespan. And Deckard is a, is a guy whose job it is to exterminate them. The question then becomes what is it that defines life itself? Is it the fear of death? Is it knowing that we're going to die? And how do we respond to that? So let's take a look at the evidence. Most of the discussion over whether or not Deckard is a replicant yes. stems from just a few scenes in the film, and in particular one near the end in which he finds an origami unicorn outside his door. Throughout Blade Runner, Officer Gaff uses origami animals to taunt Deckard, with different figures representing Deckard's cowardice and attraction to Rachel. But the meaning of the unicorn varies based on which of the seven film cuts released over the years that you might be watching. These include 1982's US theatrical cut with its voiceover and happy ending, 1992's director's cut, which Scott has confusingly disowned, and 2007's final cut, over which Scott finally had complete artistic control. First, let's talk about the case for Deckard not being a replicant. In the early cuts of the film, the origami unicorn seems random, or a possible reference to the Philip K. Dick source novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The title of Dick's novel addresses the tragedy of environmental destruction. The story is set in a world almost without nature, animals are nearly extinct, and robotic animals have proliferated in their place. Like the replicants, artificial animals aren't immediately identifiable, but are considered well, inferior. Is this a real snake? Of course it's not real. I think I'd be working in a place like this if I could afford a real snake. In the book and the film, the character's desire to possess symbols of the natural world suggests that, despite technological progress, something sacred has been lost, which has an inherent and irreplaceable value. So if Deckard isn't a replicant, the symbol of the unicorn could simply signify Deckard's longing for another lost world or freedom that, like the existence of unicorns themselves, is impossible and may never have been real or attainable. This desire manifests in the romantic getaway ending of the US theatrical release. Like the ending of the slightly later dystopian classic Brazil, which also faced pressure from the studio for a happy ending, this free-feeling sequence has an upbeat escapism that we can't help but distrust and read as imaginary or at best temporary. Interestingly, this sequence features leftover footage from The Shining, which Stanley Kubrick gave to Scott. I didn't know how long we'd have together. Who does? So the end of uh, Blade Runner in the original cut, they actually go into those leftover shots from The Shining that look like an Eden almost, like the Garden of Eden. And it is suggesting that they're retaking what the human beings can't get to because the human beings are flawed. We have sin, we have all these things. We were able to make these machines though that are actually without sin. Despite the nuances and layers here, based on the origami unicorn scene alone, viewers of one of the early cuts would have little conclusive evidence to believe that Deckard is a replicant. Now let's turn to the case in favor of Deckard being a replicant. In the director's cut and the final cut, a wild unicorn appears earlier in the film, in Deckard's daydream sequence. Because this dream scene comes before Gaff leaves the origami unicorn for Deckard, the gesture of the origami now implies that Gaff knows the contents of Deckard's mind. Since since only replicants have implanted memories, 
Gaff's apparent knowledge of Deckard's unicorn dream could be a hint that the dream has been implanted and Deckard is a replicant. This reminds us of an earlier scene involving animal imagery and an implanted memory. Rachel's story of a mother spider eaten by her offspring is an implanted memory. The egg hatched. And? And a hundred baby spiders came out. And they ate her. Implants. Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. They're Tyrell's nieces. It's significant that both implanted memories involve animals because this world places superior worth on real animals. So replicants dreaming about real animals is a symbol of their desire to be human, to be valued, and to be quote unquote real. The title of Dick's novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, underscores this symbolism by implicitly asking, what if androids dream of real sheep? Is a replicant's dream animal less real than the one a human dreams of? How can we be sure that replicants' feelings or inner lives are any less real or significant than our own. Deckard also doesn't just dream about any animal. He dreams about a unicorn, a mythical creature that's not even known to exist in our world. So the unicorn suggests this one-of-a-kind animal that's so special it's impossible. As if Deckard, too, hopes to be the one replicant who really lives. It's worth noting as well that the unicorn, due to its magical, surreal nature, was used in medieval art to represent Jesus Christ. The unicorn is a magical creature. It doesn't really exist. It's a fanciful creature that appears in folk tales or in fairy tales which are stories about values and ideals and mythologies. And what is a replicant but a unicorn? It's a fantastical creature in a story that's really about other things. The unicorn symbolism works as a message, both between characters and between the filmmaker and the audience, which is probably why Scott was so insistent on including it in later cuts. But there are also a few other clues that indicate Deckard is a replicant. First, there's his relative lack of a backstory. Replicants have no true past, and at least the newer models live only four years. Roy Batty, the replicant who's out to destroy his creators, kills only humans in the film, and he stops just before he's seemingly about to kill Deckard. We don't get an explanation for why, unless Batty's moral code prevents him from killing other replicants. He talks about how his life is essentially meaningless. All the things that he's accumulated have added up to nothing. And he allows Deckard, who he could kill, to live because he understands he sees in him that same desire to live. There's the fact that Deckard doesn't answer Rachel's question about whether he's taken the test himself, and since Rachel had no idea she was a replicant, there's no reason Deckard wouldn't also be in the dark. I'm not in the business. I am the business. And this whole movie's about is what is real, what isn't. And it takes a machine to determine who's real and who isn't. Like this machine might not always function properly, right? How can a machine determine what's human, built by humans that are flawed? So everything is questionable. We know that it's possible to mistake a human for a replicant. Have you ever retired a human by mistake? No. But in your position, that is a risk and that advanced models of androids are exposed only through excessive questioning and occasionally glowing eyes. Scott visually sparks the question of Deckard's humanity in the apartment scene, as both Rachel's and Deckard's eyes glow while they discuss the unlikelihood of her escape to the north. Situating Rachel in the foreground and Deckard behind her, Scott creates a parallel between the characters. The lesser glow of Deckard's eyes is easy to miss, and this can be interpreted as a reflection of Rachel's more complete knowledge of her identity, compared to Deckard's ignorance. Meanwhile, the choice to associate androids with illuminated eyes is a clever reversal. We think of inner light coming through someone's eyes as a sign of passion and spirit, so it's interesting that it's the replicants who actually show this passion in the film. Sight is also a key focus of symbolism throughout Blade Runner, as it explores these themes of humanity, parenthood, and consciousness. But the replicants are much more emotional, and they cry over their friends, they're awed by things. You see, the human beings have lost all sense of awe in this future. They're all just like zombies walking the streets. If Deckard is a replicant, he becomes a victim as much as the aggressor he appears to be. His relationship with Rachel also seems more cynical, as perhaps their attraction comes from a mutual subconscious understanding of their doomed shared identity. The uncomfortably violent lead up to their sex scene also could be partly explained by this layer of their relationship. And if Deckard is a replicant, there's dramatic irony to many scenes we've discussed, like the moment when Deckard realizes that Rachel is an unknowing replicant. She doesn't know. She's beginning to suspect, I think. Suspect? How can it not know what it is? Commerce. 
It explains why Gaff takes pleasure in taunting Deckard, and one of Gaff's earlier remarks job, sir. could register as a hint that Deckard is not a real man. Deckard being a replicant also explains why Gaff's final words echo in Deckard's head, and we hear them twice. It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? The repetition could be Deckard connecting the dots between his reverie, the origami, and Gaff's original comment about Rachel. Deckard's stunned look and nod indicate an emotional epiphany, and Gaff's decision to spare Rachel and let her escape with Deckard suggests that they're two of a kind. While this can be seen as a happy ending, it's more likely that Gaff sees no need to kill Deckard and Rachel, because given their short expected lifespans, Gaff thinks they'll die soon anyway. Choosing to end with the unicorn scene, Scott underlines its significance. So, in the versions of the film that include the unicorn daydream, the evidence that Deckard is most likely a replicant adds up. And we're not the only ones who think so. They know where she is. And uh, when they come out, there it is. Looks like the unicorn. And it means? That he's a replicant. Scott himself has repeatedly stated that the origami unicorn does in fact prove that Deckard is a replicant. He isn't a replicant. Is that going to come? He is definitely a replicant. Well, I thought was thought. Still, Harrison Ford has said that Deckard was not a replicant in his mind. There was a bit of contest between Ridley and I over whether or not Deckard, the character I played, was a, was a replicant or not. So I resisted the idea of being a replicant. In the novel, Deckard is explicitly not a replicant. The character has actually taken the test to prove he's human. But author Dick has stated that still, the character becomes, quote, progressively dehumanized. So this begs the question of how replicants truly differ from humans. And the book leaves us with the idea that electric animals' lives probably have some value too. The multiple cuts of the film make it easy to go on debating, but based on the evidence from the final cut and Scott's vision, we are going to conclude that the character is a replicant. Meanwhile, if this is true, it means the film overwhelmingly encourages us to identify with the oppressed android, and not with the people in the story. So this leaves us mulling over the harder question of what makes us human after all. Yes, it's about the replicants, but it's really about this larger question of technology and humanity. And how do we know what is real and authentic? If we can construct a machine that is virtually identical to a person, then what is a person? And these replicants are a way for us to talk about some aspects of humanity and our common experience, and also this question of finding meaning in life. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. <laughs>